Hi, and welcome to this live reading from The Exchange by Nadija Majujic, and this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter one. Now. I drive Jake to the community pool a few blocks away from our house. It's a hot day, and it's the only place I can come up with. Gallup doesn't have many community pools or lakes or ponds to cool off in, especially ones that are suitable for a four-year-old. The heat is oppressive, and the grass looks yellow and unredeemable. A perfect day for a swim and splash. When we arrive, the pool is packed, and it looks like everyone is elbow to elbow. At least the chairs are still available for rental, so I count myself lucky. I pay for my chair, and Jake runs to the pool and jumps in. I lie down on my rented chair and put my straw hat on. The sun's rays burn my skin, but I enjoy it even though I suspect I will pay for it in blisters later. I keep my eyes trained in Jake's direction. He's a fast swimmer, and so it feels like I have to watch all the pool at once. The children scream in their playfulness, and I can feel my eyelids growing heavy. Minutes pass, but I don't have a clue how many. Children keep screaming, and I jump up as I open my eyes, cringing at their high-pitched voices. How had I allowed myself to close my eyes? Jake's voice, if he is screaming, is subdued by the others. Jake. Where is he? I should check in on him. I look after him often to prove to myself I'm a decent mother. I remove my hat and sit up. I scan around the pool for Jake, but he's nowhere to be found. At one point, all the children resemble each other with wet hair glued to their skulls, and spotting him is impossible. I stand up and walk to the pool to get a better vantage point. I move closer to the edge looking for Jake, but I don't see him. This is not like Jake, even though he's only four. He's mature behind, beyond his age, and he'd do nothing stupid. I feel lucky that he always obeys me and never questions me. He's an easy and amendable child. After I've inspected the entire pool, my throat closes and everything starts to spin. I'm feeling dizzy and feeling my eyes rolling in the sockets. I'm doing my best to say something, make a move, but I stare at one spot and stand in one place. Where is he? Jake? My voice travels along the pool, muffled by the children's yelps. Jake? I scream a little harder and feel the weight of all those eyes staring at me. Jake? Jake, where are you? The lifeguard jumps from the watching platform and runs up to me. Ma'am, you're looking for someone? Yes, I'm looking for my son, Jake. I can't find him. I extend my arms toward the pool as if I'm about to dive in. Please, please find him. I'm on the edge of sobbing, but I try to keep my cool. The lifeguard walks up to a megaphone and places it on his lips. Jake, Jake, come out of the pool right now. The children pause for a second and stare in the lifeguard's direction, but none even flinch. Then the commotion continues as if nothing is going on. Will Jake come out of the pool now? Jake, please come out of the pool. The voice is loud and clear but no Jake shows up. I am picturing Jake lying on the bottom of the pool, lifeless, staring at the sky with his big blue eyes. Feeling nauseous, I'm stumbling around the edge of the pool. I'm, I'm choking with both hands on my mouth. I'm shocked and alarmed, and I don't understand where Jake can be. I yell out his name twice for good measure, but my voice sounds shaky. Everyone come out of the pool right now. The lifeguard's voice through the megaphone dominates the block. I didn't mean to cause all this commotion, but the situation is dire. Come out of the pool right now. The children line up and then inch toward the exit, some stumbling as they attempt to move faster than their legs can carry them. I stand there and watch them pushing each other and exchanging mean looks, angry about the interruption of their play. Several minutes pass until the pool is empty. Some people gather their kids and leave while others stand by the pool wondering what's happening and waiting to see what will transpire in the next few minutes. A large man in swimming trunks comes out of the building next to the pool and calls for the lifeguard to jump in. Scott, look for him inside. Scott jumps in the pool and swims at the bottom. Both men search for Jake, one inside the pool and the other above, but I hear no reassuring words. No, here he is, or found him. The lifeguard resurfaces from the bottom of the pool a few minutes later and announces, I see nothing. I searched the entire pool. I can't move. Reality is setting in. Jake is lost or kidnapped or or had he run away? No, no, he, he couldn't have run away. He's a good boy and he would never, never do such a thing. Good and obedient. A mama's boy, a little angel. How can I lose him like this? I, I haven't been the best mother, I admit, but the thought of, mis of missing Jake overwhelms me. 
the large man approaches me. Ma'am, we, we did our due diligence to find your son, but he doesn't appear to be here. I'm sorry. I notice gloom in his eyes. Are you sure he was in the pool last? Yes, yes, he, he was in the pool last, I say. Tears are filling my eyes. I cannot stop them. Is it possible he came out of the pool and left? It's possible, but that's not Jake-like. He would come right to me if he was tired of swimming. I look around, expecting to see Jake any second. I'm very sorry, but there's nothing more we can do. If you're certain that he's missing, call the police. He places his hand on my shoulder. I feel its weight. Do you want us to call the cops for you? The pool looks empty and as smooth as glass. The floor of the pool can now be seen covered in blue tiles. And it is as crystal clear as the fact that Jake is nowhere to be found. I stand motionless and let the sun blind my eyes from the reflection of the pool. No, no, I'll, I'll call. In my mind, I choose to drive to the police station instead. I, I don't trust phones. My head is spinning. I clench my fists. Jake's voice is echoing in my ears. Mommy, I'm here. Come get me. But when the large man taps me on the shoulder to tell me the pool is closing for the day and I need to leave, I realize Jake's voice is just a delusion. Only one thought crosses my mind. Corey. It must be Corey who kidnapped Jake. <laughs>